Hello guys, my name is Miles Kiyoko, a student in 4G at Ipanguma High School. So today we are going to be looking at water hardness. Briefly, water hardness is the tendency of water not to run out of soil. But my main objective here, what I want to teach you is how we are going to remove water hardness. This, okay, let's begin with breaking this down. As for water hardness, we have temporary and permanent. Temporary water hardness is caused by dissolved calcium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium hydrogen carbonate. So both of these are calcium state. And then there is permanent water hardness. This is caused by either dissolved calcium chloride, so this is also aqueous, or dissolved magnesium chloride. Water hardness brings about wastage in use of soap, and as a result, you have to remove it. There are six ways in which you can remove water hardness. Methods of removing water hardness. So, there are methods which are applicable to only temporary water hardness. For example, A is use of ammonia. Ammonia solution. This applies to temporary. Part B, we have use of calcium hydroxide. Note, a portion has to be taken when using calcium hydroxide because if used in excess, we are going to bring back water hardness. So, this should be noted that it has to be limited. Limited. Part C, we can use boiling. Boiling, in boiling, we break this down by use of heat. So, an equation, for example, calcium hydrogen carbonate appears, then we heat the heat. This is the boiling, this is in the water. So, what you get is calcium carbonate, which precipitates as a solid, and all the H2O liquid plus C2, which is a gas. So let's get to balance the equation. It's balanced. When you see your superior with some scales, it's because water hardness caused by calcium energy carbonate or magnesium energy carbonate that is supposed to be composed with boil the water. And that's why this is what you have. This is what you Quote the superior and it's called scales. Till up here are scales. Part D, we can use distillation. Many a times we bought water and we've seen that it's distilled. But the disadvantage of distillation is this method is expensive. So, as for the part, first three, these are applicable to temporary water hardness. Distillation is applicable to both. Part E, we can use sodium carbonate solution. When we use this solution, this can be used to remove temporary water hardness and permanent water hardness. So, for example, magnesium, magnesium chloride, which is aqueous, plus sodium carbonate solution. What we get is magnesium carbonate. Is an insoluble salt. So this will precipitate out and we left with sodium chloride appears in the water. So let's balance the equation. The equation is now balanced. What I would like to put emphasis on is the ion exchange. This is very essential because it was a question in PCC which twenty, where most students do not get to pass. It branches into two. There is use of natural resins and there is use of cement. Natural resins is where we get to use permitted forward slash zeolite or you can simply say sodium aluminum silicate. The formula of this is sodium aluminum silicate. Here is where we put the 
a zeolite. This is a zeolite. Water, hard water, is brought in through this dam. And what we need here is softened water. When we are passing through the zeolite, when we are using the natural resins, what we get to remove is the cation, either magnesium or calcium. So this is what happens. Sodium and inosate is solid in state. Then we pass water containing calcium ions in aqueous state. The calcium gets to replace sodium in, its, in the aluminosate. So what we get to have is calcium aluminosate. The same will apply to calcium because they have the same. 
in valence charge. Let's go to the carboxylic group RCOOH solid plus calcium aqueous. We'll get to form RCOO2 calcium solid plus hydrogen ions. These are the aqueous states. So we get to balance bring a 2 and a 2. So that is how simply the cations are removed, either by using the carboxylic group or the supertonic group. So let's ask for this, the supertonic group or carboxylic group which is being used as the synthetic resins. When it is used up, it is replaced. In the cation exchange up, it is replaced. Let's move to the anion exchanger. In the anion exchanger, we use a basic resin. Specifically, RNH3OH. This was what was in the 2020 question. This is solid. So this is our term. We have the we have the basic resin. So what you get to remove in the anion exchanger is the chloride ions or the sulfur. Take the chloride ions RnH3OH solid plus chloride ions, which are aqueous. We get to form RnH3Cl solid plus hydroxide ions. These are the aqueous. As for the sulfates, RnH3OH solid plus SO2. Yes. What you get is R N H three R N H three two S O four. This is solid plus O H. Hydrogen ions are aqueous. So this is, these are the reactions that will take place when we use the basic. This is a basic resin. Over time, obviously, we get to up the basic resin. What you do is we flush this chamber, the tank, using sodium hydroxide aqueous. So RNH3Cl2, this is solid. So we we'll want to remove this from the tank plus sodium hydroxide aqueous. We'll get to restore the hydroxide to the basic resin. So it becomes RNH3OH. But this goes with the water. This it becomes sodium chloride, which is aqueous. And that is how we have removed the chloride from the basic resin. When the sulfate RNH32SO4 solid plus sodium. Yes. We get to have RNH3OH solid plus sodium sulfate. So let's balance the equation. So that is simply how we get to remove water hardness. We've gone through all the steps, and this is the final step, which is the most complex. And I'm thankful for your audience. I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much.